Man in the back. Okay. And do we have anyone else on the phone besides Ken? You have a question from Don Lighting. Okay. Go ahead, Don. Hi. Thank you for having the meeting today. I'm. I'm not sure uh, which document I should be referring to because I can't see them since I have such a tiny screen. But the NRC and the NRR need to address a beyond basic event if they're running at 70% or 100% power because from what I've read on the net and from uh, expert testimony, uh, Songs Unit 2 to damage is such right now and they have not been 100% visually inspected using world class technology um, why how is this reactor going to react to a beyond basic event like a main steam line break the amount of time the control room has to operate uh, is minutes not 15-20 minutes thank you that's my question alright thank you Emmett would you like to respond to Don First, <laughs> the, uh, the the steam line break is not a beyond design basis event. Uh, steam line break is actually uh, within the design basis. It's an analyzed event, um, as is uh, an actual steam generator tube rupture. Um, that is also a design basis event, and it's uh, you know, it's analyzed in the FSAR. All right, Don, are you still with us? All right, Emmett, go ahead. You have something else? Okay, with respect to the inspections, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the steam generators uh, have been inspected 100% with uh, the industry standard probe uh, that is all tubes from end to end. In addition, uh, uh, specialized probes uh, have, uh, have been performed for the entire U-Bend region for a a region of the bundle that uh, uh, balance uh, the affected region of the steam generator. Still there? Yep, we're still here, Don. Oh, great. I have one really quick follow-on question. Okay. Hang on, Emmett's just let Emmett finish, and then you can ask your follow-on question. Okay. I've, uh, I guess I've completed my response. All right, go ahead. What's your follow-up question, Don? My follow-up question is, is the uh, NRR going to now uh, work on a cascading uh, steam generator tube failure scenario up to the current time has only been a failure, a rupture, or a leak. And Song's Unit 3 has proved that many tubes can fail at the same time, creating what's called a cascading effect. Thank you. Well, naturally, the, uh, the objective of the, of the, of the work uh, that is ongoing uh, by Southern California Edison is to demonstrate that no tubes uh, will uh, have unacceptable structural margins or, or uh, unacceptable tube integrity margins. Um, um, so the objective is to not encounter the sort of situation that uh, you have described. Thank you, Robert. Thank you very much, and uh, one suggestion is I think they should have a dedicated email address so people can send the NRR uh, specific questions, technical questions, that they'd like to see the NRR address. Thank you very much. You know, John, before we go, um, there is a, uh, a feedback form. Uh, if you send your question in, uh, there's an NRC public feedback form available on the NRC website. Uh, if you, if you or anyone wants to uh, send the NRC any additional questions, and they'll be referred to NRR or to the appropriate people, uh, we'll try to get your questions answered. So, uh, but we appreciate your your comments. Anyone else on the phone? The next question comes from Ron Rodardi. Your line is open. Okay. Go ahead, Ron. Thank you. I'd um, like to say I'm, I'm watching from Prague, Czech Republic, and it's uh, a little bit obvious that m the most important question asked tonight, well, one of the important questions was from Kendra and asking for information on a report, and it seemed to provoke a response which was um, one of the report is secret. Um, 
that to me is not a response to a direct question. Uh, it was mentioned in the meeting prior, and her next question was one that was a promise of reporting information back to the public when the previous question was not even answered. Um, I think that's typical of what's been going on with the San Onofre plant and others. And I wish to say that it's a much better policy to address the public directly and answer directly. Um, thank you for the meeting. Uh, it's a bit of a time-consuming thing to watch, but uh, when one question is answered, at least maybe we can make some progress. And thanks for your time. Uh, All right, thank you. Thank you for your call, Ron. Uh, why don't you step up and, you know, I, I, I think what he was driving at was uh, the, the document that 5059 is not really a public document, yeah, correct? Yeah, it's right. It's a licensing document. It's, a, it's never been a practice for NRC to make licensee documents uh, pu public. So they're available to NRC inspectors. We can review them. You know, any time, 24 hours a day. To us. But we have access to them. We, we will re we will review them and, and and inspect them. And in particular, the 5059 documents that you're uh, interested in, they're they're being gone over with a with a fine tooth comb. So, uh, Dave, why don't you uh, tell people what a 5059 is for anybody else who might be listening on the phone? And then maybe tell what the NRC does with that information. I mean, it's not, it doesn't appear, I'm not making any judgments here, but it's not something that happens so much in a vacuum. But I think for the last caller and for Kendra, how does the NRC use this information? What do they do with it? Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Yes, uh, the regulation 5059 involves uh, changes to the facility as described in the final safety analysis report. Uh, which describes their facility and so if they make any changes uh, they're required to do uh, a 50-59 evaluation which is, is, is uh, it evaluates the changes against the criteria in 50-59 uh, to determine whether a license amendment is required and it's a uh, 50-59 at the end of the day is it boils down to uh, a yes or no question is there a license amendment required? Yes or no? And it, uh, there's a whole lot to it, to it. It's very complex, but it, but it, ultimately it's a yes or no question. And uh, so we'll we'll be evaluating each of those changes that they've made to the facility, and and they've written a 5059 evaluation, and we're gonna we review them. Um, this is what I do for uh, a living. I'm very familiar with it, and and um, I will assess whether they uh, made the correct determination or whether it meets uh, that it does not require a license amendment. And we're reviewing uh, all of them. Uh, generally, NRC processes, inspection processes, is based on a sampling. We're not doing a sampling. We're, we're doing 100% of all 5059s considering the level of pub public interest in in the subject. So, um, okay. and like I said, not only that, we're reviewing it here and in the region. So, but there's nothing they can do about it. In terms of what's publicly available, that's just, that's uh, what uh, okay. I, was okay. and, 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 I think I can help, but I was going to add a little something to this. Uh, Thank you, Dave. It, it may be worthwhile to, to help um, for everyone to understand, you know, uh, there, there are certain documents and certain things that, that, that are submitted, that are required to be submitted to the NRC. There are reports, um, anytime they, you know, um, anything that we're, that, we're, that has to be submitted to us to review, those are, that information is, becomes docketed. It means it's information is then put into our atoms um, and, and, and we review it to determine whether it can be, um, it has any sensitive information and we'll uh, make available the, the non-sensitive portions of that, you know, in our, in our public atoms. Um, 
For the, the, when we issue the license to the licensee, they, they have certain programs that they have to go, you know, to implement. Um, the, how they implement that, uh, the records that they have associated with that implementation, those those records have to be available to us um, uh, when we do inspections to confirm that they're in compliance with their with their programs. Um, those are the documents that, that gets reviewed by by inspectors when they go out. But they are licensee documents. They're licensees' records of how they implemented their programs. So these are the, the, the 5059 that, that Dave is referring to. That's a, that's a licensee controlled document. That's something that they maintain there to, to, so that we can look at when we go out and do inspections to ensure that they're in compliance with their program. They're, they're following the regulations. They're maintaining that program. Um, so that's, I, I think they want to make sure that that's it's clear. In those cases, you know, those are, they're not submitted to us. They're not, um, Something that, that has to be submitted and, and put on the docket in that case, um, and, and when we review them, um, you know, we're not, they're not being submitted to us either, either at that point either. We're we're just looking at them when we're out there on on site and ensuring that they're in compliance. Right, and, and I should say, the licensee is not required to submit their entire fifty fifty nine evaluation on, on the docket, but they are required by 5059 reporting criteria uh, to, to submit a periodic report that summarizes each and every 5059 uh, evaluation that they performed, what was the change, and what was their basis for why uh, uh, this change of facility did not require a license amendment. So that that is a required report. It's not that the licensee is required to submit, and you, you will have access to that when, when they do that. All right. And, and they're required to submit that on a periodic basis, so that, that, that when, when, when that is submitted at the time when, it, when it's due, then that, that information will be available in that as well. Right. Uh, understood. Um, my question was specifically related to the fact that a, one of the biggest issues of concern for local residents, which I'm sure you all have heard over and over again when you've been at public meetings in Southern California, that they want an adjudicatory public hearing and a license amendment before these reactors are restarted. I'm sure you're all well aware that this issue is before the Atomic Safety and Licensing Board in a proceeding, and that there's another issue to retroactively address, a 2206 petition to retroactively address uh, whether or not a 5059 was required previously when the drastic alterations were made to the design of the replacement steam generators. So that, that is why I'm asking that question, just so that the public can hear what this process is, because it did fail drastically the last time that this design was reviewed. And so therefore, I mean, with the restart plan, the public wants the assurance of transparency from the licensee, they can say that safety is our top priority over and over again, but when they come to a public meeting and say their data that they are using as the primary premise for their restart plan is, is experimental data that's never been used in an operational assessment, and they expect us to simply accept, you know, this, this kind of process, which is, as, as Ron said, that was on the phone, a private process between the licensee and the NRC, without the opportunity for that public transparency, for that critical independent review. And so therefore, you have to understand the public skepticism about that kind of issue, and that these documents should be made public, that we should be allowed to review the 5059 documents and determine whether or not a license amendment, whether this actually impacts the final safety analysis report, well, which, has been, which has been an issue in and of itself. Uh, Mr. Mr. Hollis, if you voicemails from me regarding the, the FSAR for uh, San Onofre. Yes, I do, and I'd like to speak to you. We should, uh, we should chat. Yes, but anyway. All right. Thank you, Kendra. Uh, Barbara, do we have anyone else on the phone? Yes, you have a question from Ray Ludd. Hi, Ray. Ray is open. Hello. Um, can you hear me? We sure can. Go ahead. Okay, yes, Ray Ludd. Um, on RAI-22, um, you suggested that uh, finite element analysis was only run on a small section of the generator. And my question is, um, was, uh, and, and another statement, uh, you mentioned that the, the flowering and the, and the overall problem that happened with unit three uh, wasn't analysis here. 
Ray, is this a question for the NRC? Okay, well, let me finish, please. Go ahead. Um, the, uh, this is regarding RAI-22. Uh, is that fair enough? Yep, yep, go ahead. Well, please, please don't interrupt me. I'm trying to get this, this completed, and the interruption only makes it more difficult for me to encapsulate my question. My I don't appreciate that. Sure. Okay, let me start over then. The finite element analysis you said was run only a small section of the steam generator. And earlier in the presentation you said that the, uh, the, tu the tubeware was not part of your analysis and that you were eliminating that from the analysis. And my question is, uh, was the flowering type of, uh, that, that is the inline, uh, the inclined uh, movement of the tubes, was that part of your uh, analysis, your finite element analysis, or was that eliminated? It sounds like it couldn't be because you're only anal analyzing a very small section of tubes and not the entire tube bundle. I do have a follow-up question. Can anyone answer that? Yep. Yes, we'll attempt to answer it. Um, <clears throat> the uh, a, a finite element model of the entire U-Bend region was conducted and, and they took advantage of symmetry of ge a geometrical uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, thermal hydraulic uh, symmetry uh, to, uh, to model the problem, uh, to, do, to, uh, to develop a, a quarter model of the bundle. And so the quarter model of the bundle is representative of the, of the entire bundle region. Uh, 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 so the basic model uh, was a 3D uh, 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 model of the, of the two bundle, actually representing a quarter of it, but it, it models the behavior in the entire bundle. Uh, for matters of, uh, uh, that, that model was run several times, uh, but for, for computational efficiency, the problem was, sub, uh, was subdivided uh, uh, to consider uh, uh, to, uh, to work with local models, uh, which, are, uh, which uh, every so often are, are recalibrated against the big model. Uh, so it's, it's in essence uh, a, a 3D finite element analysis of the, of the, of the entire tube bundle. Okay, then uh, my follow-up then is, uh, was the analysis run to accurately predict the tube failures in Unit 3? In other words, is your analysis able to predict the failures that occurred in Unit 3 or, or not? Uh, these are the uh, uh, Southern California Edison analyses, and uh, they, they performed uh, uh, Arriva uh, and, uh, uh, and MHI <clears throat> performed uh, an analysis uh, to uh, 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 which um, does predict uh, the conditions in Unit 3 which led to the instability and then that model then is applied to Unit 2 uh, to uh, uh, to predict what's going to happen in the future. Now, uh, it, I, 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 I do have to note uh, that uh, the, the models were tuned. Uh, if, you, uh, if you follow the expression, they were tuned uh, to, uh, to yield uh, the condition that was found in Unit 3. Uh, and then you apply... circumstances uh, and uh, the actions that were taken during the outage to Unit 2 and then using the same model you try to predict uh, what will happen in the future at Unit 2.